Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on InRange TV. We are here today with a gun that I apparently hate. Right? A gun you hate? You love the G3. Wait, no, you hate the G3. I have been on video before saying like the G3 is the one iconic gun that I really don't like. And we have one match where you were shooting one which admittedly had a really lame stock on it. Yeah. Had that Cho8 thing or whatever. Yeah. But at the end of that match you're like, I don't ever want to touch a G3 again. Well, but I'm you're touching, touching one. a G3 again. Yes, you are. Because I managed to find one that I actually rather quite like. Uh, find is an interesting word. I would say commission. Oh, uh, that, yeah, you're right, yeah. commission. So this is a rifle that was built for me by Brethren Arms. Uh, full disclosure, I paid for it out of pocket. Mm -hmm. um, and it uh, there are four things that I never really liked about the G3, okay? And this addresses all of them. All right, the safety, mm -hmm. which is not ambidextrous and difficult to reach. Which it is now. Correct, yeah. The trigger, which is generally atrocious. Mm -hmm. uh, the butt stock, well, the length of pull and the recoil impulse, they're typically quite long and have uncomfortable recoil impulse. I'd agree. And the charging handle, which is for a left-hander, this stupid thing up there. So the most complicated thing that Brethren did on this gun themselves was to recut the charging handle to be on the right side of the gun. Which is interesting, when you look at the design of the G3, that's actually not that big of a modification. No. This part here really is interchangeable, they just never made it that way. Right. Yeah. If you haven't ever taken one of these apart, you might not realize the charging handle on a G3 is just, it's basically just a stick that pushes on the bolt. That's it. So in order to, to reverse the side, basically all Brethren had to do was weld up the hole, and then cut a new slot on the opposite side so that you can lock the charging handle up. Like literally, weld a hole, turn the duel around. Yeah. Now, for the audience, before they get pedantic on us, the charging handle does actually a little more than a stick, it's a little bit of a wedge. So when you bring it open, it actually unlocks the rollers. Yes. It should say, not unlock, but it brings the rollers into a recess. Yeah, although that's not the charging handle doing it. No, but well, no, but there's a wedge here that when you pull back, it actually helps a little bit yes. mechanically to do that. Uh, when you lift the charging handle up, you're getting leverage to begin. That's what I was trying so, to say. Yeah. There you go. And they are notoriously always stiff because this is a delayed blowback action. And this one is bad as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what they did here, obviously, we we have the charging handle cut for a left hander, mm -hmm. and then the safety has been replaced with an ambidextrous model. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, what's that? The rail. Right, I was gonna get to that. <laughs> um, the safety is actually reachable for me with my thumb. Now why is that? What happened there? Honestly, I, I think maybe it would have been fine for me as a right-hander wow. stock, but yeah. now it's ambidextrous. I find them hard to reach myself, but I think you have an extended one here. It is a little bit, yep. Okay. Um, and this is a three position selector. Yes. Uh, full auto on this does Nothing. Yeah. And there is no reason to go to full auto. You right. go to full auto and now the lever gets in the way of your finger. So you just leave it between safe and semi. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, safe and E. You yeah, Einzelfeuer. You know Ein what that means. I know. Yeah. <laughs> then a couple of the other distinctive looking things on here are the buttstock and the handguard. Okay. Which are both made by Spur mm -hmm. out of Sweden. Yes. And they were actually designed for the Swedish military, which wanted to continue using the G3 in a modernized role. And the problem they had with it was they wanted, for a modernized role, they wanted optics, obviously. Got to have optics on a modern combat rifle. Yep. The original G3 stock is specifically, has this long length of pull, and it drops so that your face can get down in line with these iron sights that suck. Which actually has two problems. One, that hump is actually quite painful with the recoil if you ride up on it. Yep. But also it drops the stock down so that when the gun is in your shoulder, you no longer have inline recoil impulse. Right. You get a little bit of that Thompson submachine gun effect. Which actually exaggerates the amount of recoil you're feeling from a, from a 308 round. Right. Yep. So what Spur did is they designed a stock that puts the cheek, the comb, right in line with the top of the receiver. Mm -hmm. Now, Brethren has also welded on a Picatinny rail here, so we can put on optics. And we're in fact using this to experiment uh, with a brand new Aimpoint Comp M5. The one that uses alkaline batteries. Yes, yes. it's got a AAA in there, last 50,000 hours. Pretty cool, just kind of insane. Um, so this stock looks goofily short. However, I kid you not, this, the, the length of pull on this is exactly the same as an M16A1. Uh, but that's interesting because, you know, we've talked about this before on InRange, uh, especially with collapsible and folding stocks and adjustable length of pull and how everyone has all these different things. And they said with the What Would Stoner Do project, you have to have an adjustable stock. Right. And then when you go check everybody's guns, they're all A1. Yeah. And now here you are with an A1 G3. Now, I'll point out, this is adjustable. Yes. But just put it all the way in and leave it there. And it works perfectly. In fact, I'm shooting this thing with basically my cheek on this receiver hump, which would be a terrible idea yeah. on a standard G3. 
you have yet to actually put a round through this. I wanted to wait and get your first shots on camera. I have not fired. So you can see what this feels like. Yep. Uh, before we get quite get to that, the handguard up here is there so that you can add accessories to it if you like. Um, despite being aluminum, it is actually lighter than the stock G3 handguard. Okay. So we're not losing any weight. Now the mounting system here is unique, is it not? It's not key mod. Correct. Uh, this is kind of a proprietary thing. Each one of these holes is threaded. Okay. And it comes with a little piece of Picatinny rail and some screws. Okay, so yep. you could put Picatinny rails on yep. where you need them based on those little uh, screw holes. Yep, exactly. Okay. Left, right, and bottom. So you don't need a cheese grater if you don't want it. Exactly. Plus weight. It's a nice slim line. Mm -hmm. um, it's got plenty of ventilation. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually going to cool down faster than a stock handguard, which is solid. Sure. Uh, weighs less than a stock handguard and allows me to mount, if I wanted a bipod out here, a light, a laser. Um, as I said, this was made for the Swedish military originally. They want things like lasers on these rifles. Force multiplying stuff in the so. field is force multiplying stuff in the field, and while you don't need it necessarily on your gun, they need the ability to mount that stuff right. because they never know what their role is going to be. The astute might notice it looks like you're using a semi mag. Yeah, I just I had a semi mag. It seems to work fine. It should. So semi mags and G3 mags are mostly interchangeable. Yep, got that. We've got aluminum G3 mags. We've got steel G3 mags. Um, so far. Gun's running great. Awesome. Um, I posted a little bit about this on the Facebook pages um, when I first got it, but I didn't want to talk about who it came from mm -hmm. until we'd actually put some rounds through it and made sure that it works. That's a good point. And it is working really well. So, so. far, now you've got like a couple mags. There. Yeah, a couple mags. I think you need to shoot this a lot on the clock, get the matches, get a lot of rounds through it before we know exactly that we're good to go. Right. But so far, indications seem to be pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I want to put some rounds through it, and then I want to put it in your hands and see what you think. Yeah, curious. Go. Okay, so I've never fired this super fancy spur modified left-handed G3, but let's go ahead and give it a whirl. Hey, this doesn't need to be ambi, that's easy, you just slap it, big deal. Oh, we need E, not F. All right, trigger is G3 trigger. I'm gonna say that that's not better yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go some mag dump here and see what the recoil feels like. Okay, if I had done that with a standard G3 stock, I think I would have been hating life right now. Um, with the exception of the trigger being this typical mushy, spongy thing, that recoil impulse absolutely was mild. Uh, uh, pretty impressed so far. I think we need to see what this is like on the clock. Um, first impressions? Wow, Spur has done a good job of uh, modifying a gun in a way that's taken what was a design that was good in its day. But uh, by changing the inline in coil, uh, recoil impulse into this stock here and getting your cheek well down lower where it's comfortable, this was much more controllable and easy to shoot. So let's go ahead and get to some conclusions. Okay, so I got to say, my first shot's not on the clock, not in any competitive environment, just doing a mag dump. The recoil impulse was surprisingly different than a traditional G3. Yeah. Lack of that weird little camel hump is a nice deal. But again, bringing everything in line changes everything. That's it one really of the things does. the AR-15 brought to the table, which kind of changed the whole rifle paradigm in terms of felt recoil impulse. Yeah. You can make 5.56 feel terrible, <laughs> and you can make 308 feel pretty good. Yeah. And a lot of that's designed to the ergonomics and the way you actually deal with the recoil impulse when it's striking you. Yeah. You know, I should point out, when the Swedes use these, mm -hmm. they still they have select fire rifles. Sure. And I've seen video of guys shooting these in full auto with these stocks. Ah. And it actually works. Yeah. yeah. Unlike, uh, far better than a standard G3. It's really amazing how such what appear to be very small differences make a huge difference in the handling of a gun. Yeah. And this is one of those indications thereof. Now, are these parts available in the U.S.? Yes. Okay. Yep. You can order the handguards and the stocks. They're not cheap. Yeah. Stocks a couple hundred bucks. That's kind of how that stuff works. So. I mean, Spur is known to be a high-end manufacturer. Yeah, exactly. And it's Swedish. Yeah. Is it made in Sweden? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is located in Sweden. Okay, so Swedish product, made in Sweden, sold in the United States, high-end. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Swedish optic on there too, for that matter. Wow, you are a Swede out today. Apparently, yes. <laughs> but you're uh, wearing Flektar and you're screwing it all up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, I don't think we ever actually mentioned this has an HK23 charging handle on it too. If you if you have a G3 or set me of any variant, whether you do this or that or anything, that right there is the number one first thing to do is change that charging handle. Yeah. That makes stuff dramatically better right out of the box. Bigger, easier to grab, more leverage when you try and actually break the, the roller lock. I don't know why they didn't do that with all the guns right off the bat, because the original yeah. one, that little stubby thing sucks. Yeah, it kind of does. It does. So yep. Now, you're saying I, I can do better on the trigger than Yeah, this. you can. Um, I don't have much experience with G3s, obviously. Um, I know you've got your uh, your Setme C308. Yeah, that thing. Uh, which has been fine. That gun yeah. has been fine for me. I do have a match trigger in it that's been worked on, and boy, a G3 trigger can be a lot better than what you got in there. Okay. So I would say that that's worth looking at. We'll keep working on that. Ironically, I gave one away to a viewer, so you would have had one if I hadn't done that. But Lucky viewer has one, yeah. Alien doesn't. Who would have ever thought that I'd end up with a G3 and liking it? I would have never held, I would have held on to that ever thinking if you would, but you, <laughs> I didn't think you'd ever have a G3 that you'd wanted to own. But I think what you need to do now is put this at the match. Oh, I'd run this two gun. Yep. Next uh, two gun match that we shoot, I'm going to be running this guy. Ah. So, um, I would like to thank Brethren for yeah. putting this together. Sure. I went out there, the first thing I was trying to do was find someone who would do a left hand, left side charging handle, yep. or right side charging handle. And I got a lot of uh, no, not interested. And Brethren up in Utah said, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And they are now offering this as an option for all the builds that they do. I find that such an interesting thing because while I realize that you guys with your crippling left-handed, you know, problems, um, that this hasn't happened before because really, unless Brethren know something I don't, the modifications required to do this are quite slim. It really is not that complicated of a process. And this reminds me of back, way back when, when I tried to get a can for the AK before the AK was a thing. And everyone's yeah. like, Go away, idiot. Like that was, and, and that's kind of the response, not idiot, but you got that response from yeah. all these, these guys. Yeah. And they were the ones that were willing to do it. So yep. uh, my hat's off to anyone that's willing to try something different and yeah. put something out there that for some reason didn't exist already. And you know, this isn't a huge deal. No. Um, for the left-hander, it's convenient and helpful, mm -hmm. but it does not make the rifle hard to use for a right-hander. Yep. Um, and the ejection pattern on a G3 has never been a problem for a left-hander. No, they go forward about a county. They kind of do a two o'clock though. Yeah. You don't have this problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was, that was something I was noticing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have absolutely no brass marring on the receiver. Now that little lip there is technically a deflector of sorts, but it doesn't, is it even getting hit? You know yeah, what? I it is. It's, it's, hitting it. It. it's not getting hit much. No, but there's a couple strikes, no. but the point is it's designed so that if you switch shoulders, yeah. unlike certain guns in the industry, <laughs> uh, it's designed so that if you switch shoulders, you actually can get away with it. I did have a number of people recommend to me that I should get a, a brass deflector, mm -hmm. and I had a couple specific ones suggested. And I figured, well, first off, most of them clamp on over the receiver and you can't use them with a Picatinny rail. Yeah, no. And I figured I'd just wait and see if it was an issue, and it's a complete non-issue. Yeah. So I would say that you replace the trigger in that with something a little more match grade-like, and I think you are good to go. With that done, it's zeroed now and it's ready for a match. Yeah. I think we want I want to see how this does on the clock. Yeah, me too. And with a lot more rounds on it. I think you should put a rifle spinner in this match. We're actually probably not. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I gotta say, 308, 8mm Mauser, all that stuff is a big advantage on those things. Dink, dink, spun. Yeah, it's usually two rounds. Done. Anyways, cool. Good stuff. I'm glad to see you got a G3 that you're not, uh, you're not, not gonna, hopefully, you're not gonna hate on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, stay tuned. We'll see how it does on the clock. Sounds good.